don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back. So today it's time for June's Mission Inspiration over on our Mission Inspiration Facebook group. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. I'll show you the prompts for June and then I'll talk you through what I'm going to do using those prompts. Okay, so these are the prompts for June. So I'll have a quick read through. So we've got glue junk mail fragments, add a layer of gesso or paint, scribble illegible text or handwriting, adhere a focal image, make marks with lids or tubes. Tubes. Add some large typography, stick washi tape or paper strip elements, and then add splatters in black or white. And our worms for inspiration this month are moon, courage, hope, mountain and texture quite a bit to go at as per usual um you don't have to do all of these you don't have to include everything you can do them in whatever order you like you don't have to use all those um you could just use one or two of these none of those or just use one of those and forget all those it's entirely up to you as long as you're inspired by something which is incorporated in these prompts then my job's done a mission accomplished but for me, I like to try and squeeze quite a few of these in, if not nearly all of them, but most of them. But that's just me. Right, so let me throw that to one side. So this is my Mission Inspiration Art Journal for 2023. So we've gone all the way through April, May, and then we're going to be starting on a brand new sheet. Let me just move my coffee out of the way. Um, we're going to be sorry, couldn't resist that. Um, working on this one. So let's have a look then. So glue junk mail fragments is the first. So I've gone through um, my junk drawer, or our junk drawer, um, and I found a couple of, um, there's a thing that came with our new cooker. Um, there's also a couple of takeaway menus that were pushed through the door. So I thought these might make some nice kind of background pieces so particularly kind of like the text on this side here so let's do that do that throw the rest on the floor let's have a look we've got some typography in there but we're not really going to use the type that is typography but it's just the texture for texture so we've got that I'm probably going to have more than I actually need here. Let's have a look at this. So take that front cover, get rid of that bit, maybe get rid of that bit, but keep that because I kind of like the blocks of colour on there. So maybe that there, maybe that there I'm just gonna add some bits and pieces just to create a little bit of texture in the background maybe that breaking into there let's have a look at this one what we've got here another takeaway another takeaway so let's tear a bit of that let's have a bit of that let's put that there that across there like that salt and pepper munchy box mm -mm. I know sounds lovely right let's have that corner just tear that down we'll have that there so this is kind of working out to be a little bit like one of the momigami pages just in the background uh, let's see what we've got black I like the barcode barcodes are good so we'll have the barcode and then oh, we've got a few symbols there as well so we'll have those in there and we'll just one little piece to fit in the middle so what should we have there two lovely dishes Sweet and sour pork. 
or sweet and sour chicken. There we go. So we've got our junk mail background. So slap it on mat. So what do I need just to keep a record of where everything went? Sort of. Let's transfer all that over there. Kind of in the same position it was, so I know where to put it back. So let's get some matte medium. Come on. This isn't empty. There we are, that's better. <laughs> I knew it wasn't empty, I could feel it. All right. Dear me, I really need to treat myself to some new brushes. Okay, so I'm not going to paint the backs because I'm going to encourage a few wrinkles, that kind of stuff, because one of the worms for inspiration I know, words for inspiration, was texture. So if we add matte medium only onto one side, the chances are we'll get some buckles and some wrinklage, which is going to also add some texture into the page. And we don't mind that. In fact, we want that my precious is. I can't do the voice. It just gives me a sore throat. Right, let's get this one in the corner. I'm going as quick as I can because I think my camera battery is down to one bar. So as much done as I can real quick like and if my camera dies I'll just have to jump to when I've finished gluing everything down if not I'll just keep on going until it doth I'm still intrigued by this salt and pepper munchie box I don't think we've ever actually been to this takeaway <laughs> Looks like we're going to. Let's get that big. Did we say that there, didn't we? And that bit in there. I think we might be able to get this done before the camera gives. There we go. Yes. Excellent. So I'm going to go over everything just to make sure it's all got a decent coat. So this as well, the matte medium, will also act a little bit like a gesso and allow us to be able to manoeuvre paint and that kind of stuff on the top afterwards. Uh, let's get that in the wash, give this a little bit of a dry and I'll be right back. Okay I've got a little bit of charge back in the battery so next step on the list, so we've glued junk mill fragments. So that's done, so add a layer of gesso or paint, right. So I've got some white gesso here, but I've also got some indigo blue paint. Now I've got warm tan, I've got peppermint tea, I've got townhouse teal, love that color, and I've got olive waistcoat. Now these are all matte paints, so these are opaque, they're not translucent, so you won't be able to see through them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of the coloured paint to the gesso. So let me just grab that brush. I'm soaking in water for a few minutes. There we go. So I'm going to take some of the white gesso and I'm going to go over the whole thing just to knock back 
the junk, you'll still see it, but it'll be not quite as prominent in the background. And while the gesso is still wet, it kind of disappears a bit more, but when it dries, it dries lighter. So you do see what's underneath um, a little bit more. So to start off with then, let me just grab, just shake it up first. Shake it to wake it. Just, just in case there's a little bit of separation. I'm just going to dab the brush straight in. And then while this is still dry, dry, wet, I'm just going to mix with the gesso. Just kind of like pentelly strokes. And then I'm going to grab the green. Ooh, it's a bit thicker. Take some from the lid and then work that maybe down here and then a little bit up here. Bit of that green up there. And while it's still wet, let's grab some of that blue, that lovely townhouse teal. Love this colour. J'adore, as they say on the continent. And I'm just going to bring that blue down here. Okay, so we've kind of created a really scrabbly, um, almost kind of landscapey backdrop where we've got browns and greens forming, uh, almost like a landscape. And then we've got that little kind of blue thing in the sky, that blue thing going on in the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in a little bit of black gesso now. And I'm not even going to bother cleaning the brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of that black And I'm going to start darkening up towards the top and then just bringing my brush down, just blending it and then working down. So I don't want it too bright. There we go. So we've got a hint of that blue still. So we're creating tones and shades. So tones with the white, when we mixed it with the colour, and shades with the black. That's the difference. If it's mixed with white, it's a tone. If it's mixed with black, it's a shade. And now I just need a wet wipe. These things are never packed properly. They never just come out easily. Look at that. I suppose that's what happens when you buy them on the cheap. Right. Okay. Let's get that dried off and then I'll be right back. All those paint layers are dry, so we can tick adding a layer of gesso and paint on this. So the next one's going to be scribble illegible text or handwriting and then adhere a focal image. This is when we're going to start to just mix this up a little bit. Um, I'm not going to add the, the scribble, the illegible scribble text or the focal image or making the marks or the typography until I've added some of this washi tape down here. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do number seven. Whoops. That's unscrewed in there. I shouldn't have done that. Um, I'm going to do number seven before I do anything else. So this is what I said about you're allowed to kind of mix and match a bit if you want to. So I'm going to take a little bit 
of washi tape. And I'm going to put some of that just down here. So I've just got a few rolls. That I want to just add some texture with. Although I've got all this out, I might not use it all. Just a little bit up here as well. I like that brick wall one. Smaller piece. Just a little bit, it's a token. That's all it needs to be, just a token. You don't have to go mad. As long as you've got a little bit in, the job's done. I'm not going to use those two so they can go back in my tub. Like so. So we've done the washi tape. Right now, I'm going to adhere my focal image. And I've gone through my collection of images and I found this beautiful hair. And I'm going to sit that over the top of the washi tape there. Which is why I wanted to get it down first. So let's just grab that matte medium again. Now this time, I am going to do both front and back because I don't particularly want loads um, of bubbles or wrinkles in the hair. So I'm just going to paint that over here. I'll do it really, really quickly. I don't want it to curl completely. Right. Hopefully I can get it down without too much of an issue. Try and get it straight. There we go. So there shouldn't be, because we've used the matte medium both the front and the back, before sticking it down there shouldn't be any wrinkles. Because the wrinkles are formed when there's a tension between the front and the back. As soon as you put adhesive on anything, it, it tends to, when it starts to dry, wherever the glue is, say for example the glue's on this side here, it will start to pull. And it will, as it tightens up, it starts pulling the substrate, which is why you always get curls. And it's the same with um, matte medium as it is with glue. So if you do both sides equally as it dries, it dries equally, therefore you don't get the, that same kind of wrinklage that you do if you want to do one side if that makes sense okay so that's adding the focal image All right so and now I want to make some marks with lids and tubes alright so I've got a couple of lids here um, that I'm going to just create some circles with in white let's just do them in white why not so I had somewhere um, a real small one and it's disappeared. <laughs> I don't know where it's got to. I'm not putting anything up here, you'll see why in a little while. And then maybe just a couple to lock in down there. I'm going really really gentle with the paint. I don't want real thick thick lines. That'll do. And like I said I'm just going to do tokens. I'm not going mad at all. Now I did want a smaller um, a smaller point, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, 
an eraser, pencil eraser. I've done small dots in the back. Actually, that'll do. I can just use that, can't I? With any luck. It's kind of just like using bits of bubble wrap and we've added marks with bubble wrap in the past. You could use a pencil point or, or anything, just anything to make a mark. Let's see if I've got a smaller one. There's an even smaller brush there. Let's see if we've got a smaller point on it. And all I'm doing is creating kind of like little decorative doodle dots. Almost like bubbles. <laughs> that will do. Okay, so once again, we just need to get that dry. Right, that's dry, so now make marks with lids and tubs. So next, we've got type, uh, add typography and scribble illegible or text or handwriting. Well, I'm going to wait for that just for a minute. I need to do something else now. Right, I want to create a kind of stencil, if you like. Um, almost a following this same kind of line that we've got going on there. So, sort of up and then down a bit and then back sort of up over this way. So I'm going to rip that kind of shape to be exact as long as it kind of follows that line. So that line there should create a, a mask for the sky and this one should create one sort of for that mountain range there and that's kind of what I wanted it for. The typography next so I want to try and or do I want to put it into the land? No, I think I'm going to try and put it into the sky. So, right, what did I do with my box of inks? Um, yeah. Right, I've got some stays on inks here. So we've got teal blue. So I think that might be enough. Or cloudy sky, actually, that's more of a greyish colour. I think that's cloudy sky is going to work better. And I'll need a clean foam. Okay. Lovely. So cloudy sky is going to be kind of like blackish colour isn't it? So let's add this typography over here. All I'm going to do is just gently go upwards from that line. I will try and avoid the rabbit's ears. Just dark down here. Ooh. 
so beautiful smell of almonds. Definitely tell you're using stays on. So if I lift that off now and then bring that up here. Like that, and then I just add a little bit just in there. Just in that sky, and when I lift that off, you see we've got almost like a sky shape. Right, so that's going to need a couple of minutes to dry a little bit because it's solvent based. I want that dry. Um, and then we can add our illegible text. So, back in a moment. The stenciling is now dry enough to work on top of. So, I'm now going to utilise some of that card. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And punch a hole. This is a one and a half inch circle punch. Is it stamping up? No, it's an EK success. So I'm going to use this as a stencil too. So where that washi tape is there, I'm going to stencil through that with a piece of sponge. And I'm going to get some of that white gesso. And I'll just use a little bit of that just to work on, but I also want to grab a little bit of the of the um, the black as well, just a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm going to just work the gesso into the sponge, and then I'm going to just go around mostly in the middle and keep it kind of light towards the edges a bit more diffused and then I just need to dry that quickly without burning my hands and then I can just add another lighter layer into the middle leaving that diffused edge as we can and then I'm going to just take a tiny bit of the black Just add a little tiny, tiny touch. More white. I think I've gone a bit too heavy with the black. So let's just break that down a bit. Get a bit of a smudge. That'll do. I think that'll do. Just like that. Get that dried off. A bit too dark. So I'm going to come back in again. That's the beauty with doing these little things. We can keep on adding.
Right, I think I'm going to need a clean sponge. So I'm just going to cut a small one. Real small. That's the beauty of these sponges. You can literally cut them to whatever size you need. Let's reload that lid up again. There we go. Take a little bit. There we go. Grab the stencil again. Better. Okay. So I think that's pretty dry now. So what I just want to do is I'm going to lay that piece that we cut out and I'm just going to go around just to kind of create a little bit of a halo effect. Just a little bit of a kind of little halo effect. So let's get these paints put away. And then get everything dried off and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now got the typography, focal image is done. Now I can scribble illegible, illegible text. So the text that I'm going to scribble, although it's going to be illegible, you're not going to be able to read it, is actually the song lyrics from the Bing Crosby song By the Light of the Silvery Moon. So I'm going to be adding those, um, particularly just the first kind of like verse if you like. So if you want to, as I'm writing this, you can hum along if you want. Then I'm going to carry on underneath. I think that'll do for that. So just at the bottom I'm going to do a bit of a kind of like doodly frame just to kind of give it the idea of grass. Just like that. And then we'll just follow that up. all the way around. Just 
just to do a complete border all the way around. Love it! Uh, there seems to be something missing in the middle. Right, so what do we got here? So scribble illegible text or handwriting. Right, okay. Add splatters. There we go. So let's grab that white again. And let's have a little splatter brush. Splatter brush. And let's add some of that onto the worktop and it's clean water. <laughs> I'm going to just turn it round upside down and then we can just add some splatters there just a few around there just to kind of consolidate and if I get any on the rabbit on the rabbit on the hair I can just wipe off if I don't need them because we've gone over with a matte medium okay let me have a quick clean up and a tidy up and we'll dry it off and then I'll be right back okay so now we've done that bit I don't know what I've done with my pens there right in front of me. So let's see how we've done. So junk mail fragment, yes, that's added the texture with the washing tape in the background. We have our moon and obviously the song is about the moon and we've got almost like a mountain in the background. I think <laughs> I think I'm going to call it a day there. I think we've got enough in or as much as we're going to really cram in. I don't think we can get much more in there. So all I'm going to do now is just to quickly sign this and put today's date, which is the 3rd of June. So there we go. That is my art journal page for June's mission, inspiration, art prompts. Don't forget if you've enjoyed watching me create this challenge or the back channel page for the challenge, please remember to give the video a thumbs up because it really does help me. Um, don't forget you can always share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. And don't forget if you want to join us over in our Mission Inspiration Facebook group to join in with these monthly challenges, that's the URL on the screen there. There'll be a clickable link in the description below the video if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on my blog then it's literally just below as well. So all you have to do is just click on that, pop across to Facebook and ask to join. And that's it, as simple as that. I hope to see you in the group in the near future. So that's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.